an exciting announcement from our sponsors. Next Tuesday, Insights.gg is officially launching. If you want to climb this season, try out their game recorder that automatically detects kills, deaths, and assists, so you know exactly where you need to review your game footage. It is free, so sign up for an account today. Link in the description below, guys. We're leashing, probably leashing, honestly, a little bit too long here. Uh, Kane is a jungler with a lot of built-in sustain. Yeah, you he, shouldn't even have to leash him, but he was begging. Yeah, typically Kanes go raptors, and you don't even have to leash. But if you are going to leash your jungler, no matter who the champion is, uh, don't leash this long, because what this does is put you at risk of missing experience. Like, if this ADC is an idiot, which very high chances that he is, he walks up and cues the minions, and then you miss experience. So don't give them the chance to screw you over like that. Uh, and then right off the bat, hold on. So typically, um, you want to be looking at your enemy laners and seeing if they are missing any mana bar or health bar, because that's going to be a pretty clear indicator that they leashed for red. Uh, you can also look at the enemy jungler, uh, you know, like you said about Kane, Kane typically doesn't even need leash, so that's not always going to give you the information. But these guys didn't have anything missing from their health bar or their mana bar, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't leash bot side. But like for instance, if Bran comes and he's missing like a tenth of his mana bar, that means that he used a spell, which means that he 100% leashed for the jungler. So okay. that's the first bit of information you can get so when you're walking to lane. Which side the jungler Right, and that's important because if she started red, unless she goes for a level 2 cheese, like she goes from red immediately to here in ganks, which you'll see with your board, uh, that means you're not getting ganked for like probably the first 5 minutes of the game, which is great. Um, when you're on this side of the map, it, this is actually like the much better side to play bot lane from because you typically don't get ganked. The first gank occurs, and we'll, we'll look at the clock when it actually happens, but outside of like weird cheese ganks, the first gank occurs at 3.15. So just remember that timer. It's probably not going to be you because Elise would have to path from here to Raptors to Krugs to here, and that'd be like a really, really a awkward gank time. path. Yeah, massive waste of time. Uh, typically, if a jungler starts bot side, he's going to gank top side or mid first. So you're good for now. All right, so this is actually trades that you want to be taking. And the reason is because they're be they're so beyond their minion wave that if Cinna autos you, the minions, the minions are going to be the minions are going to be attacking her. See, look, she instantly, and this is basically like a three v five. So this is actually a trade that you don't want to be running away from. Like it looks bad at the very beginning because their characters do more burst, like in the first so like. I should be chasing them and autoing. I mean, not necessarily chasing. It's just you're kiting backwards instead of just literally taking this trade. Like if you literally stand here. You guys win this trade so hard. I always kite backwards. You'll see this. Yep. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you should. Typically, you should as enchanters, but just understand that, like, they are way, way out of line there. Yeah. Well, he shouldn't scare you at level one, though. Level two and onward. He can't stun. Yeah, yeah. Level two and onward, he can stun you. So. But yeah, just understand, because so many people will get so caught up, because the trade goes really well for them at the beginning, and then all of a sudden. They start taking minion aggro. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I got a DM. Oop. Okay. But yeah. So that right there, just have have a healthy understanding of like when you can trade and can't trade. Yeah, level two, you need to be a little afraid of a brand. Uh, also, I want to see. Try to imagine like a horizontal line between you and your ADC. And 95% of the time, you want to be even with your ADC. You don't want to necessarily be overextending. And you definitely never want to be this far back. Because what this is going to do is you're if, if this minion dies right here, you miss this experience. And then you're behind in levels, possibly for the rest of the game. So okay, always... How close do you have to be to it to get it? Uh, if you're back here and this one dies, you will miss that one for sure. Um, there's not exactly like... An exact science. I don't think there's like an indicator I can show you, but it's roughly like around here, like this That's sort of like radius. Super good to know because 
I do find also I, I float a, a lot to help the jungler, but I find that I do get behind in levels a lot. Yep, and that is really, really bad for bot laners because experience is also is already super, super scarce in bot lane. It's the worst, it's the hardest lane. To, see, look, he hit level two, you did not. You missed experience. So yeah. always try to be drawing that horizontal line between your... Uh, you and your ADC. Try to match the aggression of your ADC. If you get a super passive ADC, you can't be standing out in front because you're going to die and he's not going to be able to back you up. But watch this. If he takes... If Bran uses all his spells and hits Jin right here, you're not even in a position to help him out. Yeah, you can put your W on him, but like... If, if he if he lands a stun... Yeah. No. Oh, you actually kill this guy, though. I actually kill him, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's just the uh, enemy misplay. We don't want to rely on that. Yeah, so don't miss experience. Try to always match the aggression of your ADC. Don't stand too far ahead. Don't stand too far behind. You know, there's going to be times where you do need to be, like, a little bit behind, especially because you play enchanters. But typically, always try to be, like, drawing that horizontal line. If your ADC is here, you want to be here. Like, this is really good positioning right here. Yep, yep, we gotta break that habit thing, because that's, that's a bad habit. Uh, you guys probably could have pushed another wave, uh, but that's, especially in lower elos, that's kind of like the ADC's call, so it's fine. Alright, so that's we go. That's another thing that I do have problems with, is some people yell at me if I don't help shave the wave a little bit, and some people yell at me if I touch the wave. Yeah, the, so uh, I <laughs> never know what to do. Yeah, ADCs have a very, very, like, particular vision of, like, what they're going to do with the wave. And if you don't happen to, like, read their mind and know how to, like, you know, fit into that, they get very, very picky. Okay, now my question about that ward, I put it there because I still hadn't had eyes on the jungler. And I was worried about, because we were pushed in so far, her maybe coming from behind. And I know that's probably not a great spot. Um, would it have been better to hold on to it? Um, since, okay, so since, since you're... One every time I back. Yeah, and, and that's good. That's great. Buying at least one or two control wards is always good. Um, a better ward probably would have been here, because if you're here and Wait, you already... Here? Uh, this, oh, the, the bush above. Okay. Yeah, this ward. Um, because worst case scenario, you walk up here and Elise is in this bush, but you had eyes on their bot laners. She's not going to 100 to 0 you this early in the game. Like, she's not going to cocoon you and one-shot you before you're able to heal yourself. So you should be pretty confident to walk in here and get vision over here because this is going to give you vision of like if elise comes and tries to steal a camp or if she's coming for that dive it's going to let you know before it happens it's just going to be a much better better ward this is this is like you said it's an anti-dive ward and it's good but typically it, yeah this would have been much more better ward Nothing too crazy going on in laning phase. We're taking some trades. Uh, one thing, do you ever go Relic Shield as, Re as Nami? I have a few times here and there, like maybe occasionally on Lulu or even once on Seraphine, like if they were really, really poke heavy and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make trades. But with Nami, I hardly ever do because I feel like between my E and my W, I can almost always get poked in. Mm -hmm. It just seems like you're kind of afraid of Brand, and you're you're cutting into your gold generation because Brand is never going to be afraid to poke you. And so look, he's already like a hundred gold up from his uh from his gold generation on this. So if you ever, you know, you can lock Nami, but I feel I just don't want you to be like auto locking. Um, spell thieves just out of habit because relic shield is almost just as good and it's way safer. The only thing you really get out of um, spell thieves is the is the mana regen, but we're really not using any mana regen. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, and there we both warded at the exact same time. So. Ah, I mean that that happens. Okay, so tell me about what's going on in this lane right now. Okay, Brand left and went mid, mm -hmm. and. I knew that. I thought that they were going for the dragon, so I was hoping to get Jin a kill. I should have been more aggressive here, and I wasn't. Okay, well that's good that you know that, because that's exactly true. Your options are to pursue up the river, 
since we know Brandon didn't go through the river, he just took the long route um, and tried to affect this fight. This is honestly a pretty safe river to traverse right now because we know where everyone's at. Um, and you could probably get to this fight and affect it in one way or another. And even worst case scenario, like you get here and turns out your team lost the fight, you can just come back down the river, right? You're not going to die. You're not going to get like collapse on or anything. So that's option one. Uh, and the other option, which is much simpler, is the one that you said. Just literally step up. Kill. Yeah, get him a kill or at least like push Sin out of lane. Like there is no way. Uh, once again, standing way too far behind your ADC. Make sure we're drawing those horizontal lines. But yeah, she can't. She shouldn't even be able to walk up for this cannon right now. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, I turned it on. What? I was just scared for a second. There you go. Well, I guess we don't get her there, but we do. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, but now we should start to be a little a little afraid because we don't have vision of the river, no vision of the dragon, no vision of either of the river bushes. The fight in mid has ended and and our mid laner is about to be off the map and our jungler is already off the map so now we're I knew brand back but i did not know where the jungler was yeah and elise can 2v2 you here if elise comes through here lands a good cocoon you guys probably die so i would be a little more wary than i than you guys were there uh also now is probably a really good time to reset because right around now the seven minute mark uh if you guys try to dragon um they brand has bought and you guys have not bought in a while. And you guys probably are sitting on some pretty good gold amounts. So I would be pushing in this wave and uh, looking for a reset. And then walking straight to the dragon. I was having a hard time getting him to back. I was trying to get him to back and he wouldn't. Yeah. Classic ADCs. They want to stay till they die. But then Kane came in for a gank. And that's another thing, too. I kept trying to get him to do dragon, I, and he'd go up there and then come back, and so I was wasting my time going back and forth. Should I not do that? Um, well, you can be decisive. You can ping the dragon. If you know, if you know, if you're the better player and you know that the dragon is the right call, you can be aggressive with your calls. But I wouldn't be calling the dragon right now until I've reset. We don't know where she is. We, we don't know where she's at. She's got a pretty good, you know viable chance to steal it and you guys haven't bought yet you guys are sitting on a lot of gold if like you guys are in a great position to push this in to, uh rule of thumb you want to make your wave touch the turret and back because what that does is makes the adc essentially have to sit here and respond to the wave and get all the cs or else miss it all and you get to go back buy your items and be stronger for the next fight so I would have, when you guys had it touching the turret, I would have just immediately came to one of these bushes, pressed B, recalled, and then called for your team to do the dragon. Because it would have been in a really, really good spot to do dragon. Now it's going to be kind of like a coin flip whether you guys get it or not. Okay, we're ganking, but like, we're still not that strong, so... Okay, you got... Nice bubble, okay. Alright. This, this attempt for the second kill little greedy you don't want to really waste your jungler's time jungle is the most impactful role in the entire game so like kind of like tempting him and being like oh we might get the senna like I, I i don't think this gank is ever gonna work so i would just you know be like hey good job and then maybe caution ping him away you know you know how to caution ping um i i know how to do the red exclamation thing and then the question mark or whatever but i don't know how to do like enemy has vision here so i want to know how to do that okay so when we get into game i'll, I'll help you with the hotkeys because those those are two things that you really really want because the red one is like urgent the the yellow one is the one that i could you would use to like communicate to my jungle like hey we're not going for the second one because it's just like a little like yellow caution sign it's not like the red like blinking like emergency right uh it's just like a yeah, little yeah, we, we'll bind that one, and we'll bind the uh, enemy has vision. It's just, they're both in hotkeys. Alright, so now we're taking this dragon fight. We still haven't fought. We still haven't bought. We haven't backed. So, we have low mana bars. We have You have a low health bar. Kane is basically already dead. Uh, whether this fight goes well for you guys or not, it doesn't matter. Because it... it we made a mistake. Right. So you guys wipe them, you get the dragon. Alright, and we finally recall. That is a question I have also. I'm obsessed with Moby, Bo Moby Boots. I'm not. 
because I like mobility, but everybody tells me to get the lucidity. CDR boots. Yeah, CDR yeah. boots are absolutely broken this season. Uh, so it, it used mobility. to be Mobies. Yeah, Mobies were like super super meta for supports last season but they increased the gold amount by 100 which i'm sure you know 100 gold is a lot for a support sometimes so it's just so much better to get the cheaper cdr boots and be able to pump out um more heals more shields more everything more bubbles and most importantly they give you cdr on your summoner spells too it's the only way to reduce like your flash timer uh which is very very important as a squishy immobile enchanter to have your flash up so definitely definitely cdr boots um i know sometimes we get into like habits and like it kind of just becomes a little bit part of our play style to go mobies but yeah mobies aren't great on nami mobies are mostly for like leonas and blitz cranks people who are going to roam mid a lot yeah Because yeah, as soon as the fighting stops, your mobies be or as soon as the fighting starts, your mobies become completely worthless. Because you're going to be Wing your ally, and that W is going to hit an enemy, and then you're going to technically be in combat, and all of a sudden you just lost just for doing your job. Yeah, you you just lost like a hundred movement speed. Yeah, this, this isn't too bad. Remember that you have tools in your kit to be able to land those bubbles a lot easier. Um, remember that you can uh, you can E yourself, and then your next spell actually slows. So what you can do, instead of just landing... Oh, E auto. Yeah, you and can then... E auto or, or E W. Okay. And that both of those would slow Senna here. And then you're not just like taking a complete gamble. Sometimes you gotta gamble, sometimes you gotta just like shoot it and hope it lands, but... You, Nami has tools to be able to land those bubbles a little bit easier. Alright, there you go. Be sure to drop the wave on top of the bubble. So you want to be um, layering your CC. You landed the bubble here. Kind of like in WoW where you chain CC. Right, right. Okay. And... The second you see this is a stun, you don't want to give her time to like do motion to do actions here. Because by doing that, you actually allowed her to get off a Q and a W. And in a lot of matchups, that's gonna kill your ADC. So you wanna be timing it so that you're stunned. And uh we'll we'll make sure when we play our game that you have the uh the CC indicator as well. You see how this has stunned and it has a timer going down. You have that turned on, right? Okay, we'll we'll make sure because that's super super important as a as a uh, support to know when to use the the wave layer CC. Nice, you guys win. Anyways, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, the, I felt like the game was going really well, and then it just Yas got fed, Kane went blue, and just kept dying, and it just went to shit. Yeah, the crazy thing is, is that even though you guys, this game does look like it's going really, really well, the only actual metric that matters in this game is this one and this one, and you guys really aren't up by all that much CS. Uh, CS. So it, it can visually look like games are going really, really well, and you can kind of overestimate how big of a lead that you guys have on have on a team. But really, un unless you guys have like a big gold lead, which you guys only have a, what is that, 800 gold? It's only 800 gold lead. Which is less than two kills. Yeah, I missed my bubble because of the wall. Yeah, I mean, that's just Yasuo. I hate that well, champion. I, 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 I don't play very well against Yas, ever. Let me, let me see what this flash is about. I, I'm guessing that's just a misclick. a misclick. Okay, yeah, it happens. I had surgery on my left finger, and so I, I struggle to hit the flash button, and sometimes I accidentally hit it. Uh, probably see that. Have you ever considered rebinding it? I I'm already struggling with the bindings that I have because I bind my wards and I bind my potions or like any actives or whatever, and so that finger doesn't move to reach any other keys. Gotcha. Are 
Okay, so now would probably be a really great time to be looking for a recall since. Now, even if my ADC doesn't recall, because that's the problem. Like, I find that I want to back, but they refuse to, and I don't want to bail on them. Yeah, it's not necessarily bailing if you're leaving them in a, in a place where they can exist 1v2. You've got great vision right now. We know where. Um, yeah, Kane is close. Worst case scenario, we know where uh, their mid laner is shoved in. So Yasuo is going to have to answer this wave very, very soon. So he has to be going mid right now. Um, their top laner, their his his alt is down. So like we're not looking out for a gangplank alt. So yeah, uh, don't think of it as like bailing on your ADC or anything. Uh, especially with Mobies, because you're gonna get back to lane really, really fast. So. Now, don't be leaving him, like, high and dry. Like, if you're against, like, a Leona and a Tristana, someone that can just, like, engage on him at at will, you know, probably bleed. don't want to be leaving him with that lane. But, yeah, I, I would definitely... You could have snuck in a recall there for sure. Recall timers are very... Yeah, right here, mm -hmm. he wouldn't back. And I'm like, dude, you have no health, because I was, I was typing. I'm like, I have no mana, you have no health, and he wouldn't back. And so, even though I have no mana to really help, I was afraid to leave them. Yep. But, I mean, you have no mana, so, like, you can't help them. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's why I stopped up there, because I was typing. I'm like, dude, we need to back. Yeah. Remember, turn chat off. Do you... Type to your teammates as little as possible, and never, never even give them a chance to respond. Like, you're not looking for criticism or strategic advice from people that are the same skill level or worse than you. Turn that... Turn it off. I hate chat. Mute all second you get in game. All right, so that's that's definitely I, I would see the recurring uh, biggest issue that I'm seeing with you is that you need to definitely be recalling way more frequently. Just reset when you can get an item like a safe yep. item. Yep. And here also I get Moonstone. I used to always get Imperial Mandate with her, and then I think I was watching Low Pally, and he said that no, that the Moonstaff is too strong right now. Yeah, Mo Moonstaff is insanely strong. Yeah. Especially because you have so many options to proc it with Nami, you can um, W, which would heal someone, and that's going to proc Moonstone. Uh, you can also shield them, and it's kind of weird, and I don't even know if this is intended, but your interaction with your E, when you E, some, like, like let's say you E Galio, if he has taken damage recently, um, your E is going to cast Airy. And that's going to proc Moonstone. It's the oh, wow. yeah, it's the weirdest thing ever. So as long as it, and that's going to because the the requirement to proc Moonstone is you have to be in combat. It's so like if you get a W off, the W hits them. It's going to cast Moonstone, and then your E if he's recently taken damage, which is like the weirdest thing ever. But yeah, that's going to cast Moonstone. I know I screwed up. Yeah, it's just a panic ult. We don't we don't go for these because you got to think like. Unless you're trying to catch Elise, which I don't think you were. I think you were trying I to steal the steal dragon. Yeah. yeah, the odds of it are just so, so, so low. And now you're, now you're like, significantly less useful to your team. But you recognize it as a mistake, so I won't harp on it. And see here, you see how I always play behind him? I, I feel like because I'm a healer and I'm so squishy that I have to. Well, especially when it's team fight time. Well, you need to in some cases. Like, for instance, your front, the only person keeping you alive actually moved away here. And right here, you should immediately recognize you're about to be in danger because Yasuo is the most mobile champion game, m mobile champion in the game if he has a wave. And look at what's coming. You're about to give him 11 dashes. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You're about to give him 8 dashes if you stick around. So right when Galio leaves, that needs to be your cue to leave as well. Because, I mean, if he doesn't kill you here, he's just misplaying. Alright, yeah. yeah. I'm just slippery. <laughs> he misplayed. You should be dead there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a fish. <laughs> oh. I'm still dead. Yeah, I just didn't want to ruin it for you. <laughs> Now this is another question. I want to be with the team, but my ADC 
CDC refuses to be with the team, but he's fed, and but I shouldn't leave the team to go babysit him, right? No, 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 De okay. no, no. Definitely be. This is where you want to be. You want to be where the action's at. You Nami's a very, very strong team fighter. She's great at disengage. She's great at engage. Always be thinking about can you use your ulti though? Because against a champion like Yasuo, unless you see the wind come out, you have to assume that he has a pulse. He's gonna he's gonna react to it. And it's very very easy to win wall, and it sucks because the entire fight could pass by and you, he just doesn't use the win wall. But you can't use your ulti until to use until you see it, or he gets CC'd. See, and we're winning most of these trades. We're winning most of the team fights. Um... Oof. Yep, most of us do. Okay, in a scenario like this, don't worry about stealing the kill. I know some people will spaz about it, but there is like a 50-50 chance where he kills you there. I think if Gangplank like gets an auto queue off on you, you just die. So it looks like you're doing what I see a lot of support players do, which Make is try sure to... Give try, kill, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is like, that's a relic of the past. That all literally doesn't even matter anymore. Like maybe back in like season one, two, three, where gold economy was completely different, but 400 gold on you is just as valuable as 400 gold on on Jin these days, and especially if it if it absolutely denies gold on Gangplank, and makes you sit out of the game for 30 seconds. Like, never if if there is a shred of a chance of you dying, just take the kill. All right, so once again, sneaking in recalls right here. There's nothing more for you to do. If Jin wants to stay and farm this wave, so be it. But yep, you've supplied vision for him, but you want to go back. I'm, I'm sure you've got a lot of gold from the last fight we just survived. On this, Nar was pinging me to help him with scout. That's why. Yeah. Not pinging me, but tied to me or whatever to help him with scout. Yeah, but I mean, I mean it's going to be hard for you to do because I can tell that you're a player that like wants to satisfy your team and like wants yeah. to support your team from all angles but I'm telling you like you just need to focus on improving your understanding of the game so that you know what's correct to do and you sticking around to you know get vision in the jungle here and you know do laundry laundry for NAR and stuff like that is just not the right call we definitely need to recall here so that we can keep it we can you know refresh our uh, ward stone our sight stone get back up on the map all that good stuff because we've, we've pretty much not accomplished anything for the last minute I would say we've kind of just floated around in circles yeah Now, imagine if we, instead of doing what we did over here, we recalled and we're down here for this fight and we could have turned it. Sometimes League of Legends is just like a game of inches and seconds and being in the right place at the right time and yeah, every, every second spent. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you should, you should have a, a strong understanding of what you're doing when you're doing it. If you ever find yourself kind of just like floating around, I messed up here too. All right. Bad. Yeah, we're getting way too in their face. I mean, I respect the ambition. <laughs> I do, but the odd. Someone would come help me. <laughs> I I know I know, but if they're not coming to help you, you're just amplifying. Yeah, you're just amplifying the bad play. Like yes, I agree. Your team should probably be contesting this dragon, but you can't do it. Uh, one of the most important concepts I try to teach in coaching is four or five people doing the wrong thing is so much better than one person doing the right thing. Because, yeah, I agree, you should be contesting this dragon. I wish you guys were, but you're not. So by you contesting it, it's it's worse. You're the one person. You're the one person doing the right thing. It's way worse than just all five of you letting the dragon go and doing the wrong thing. A lot of League of Legends is just being on the same page as your teammates. So in this situation, I'm not staying too far back. Then. Now. No, this is pretty good. Th yeah, th I, this is good positioning for team fights. Yeah, 
I, I haven't seen you do anything like egregiously bad in, in positioning in team fights. It's just like when waves are collapsing and it's a little bit in laning phase. But your, your team fight positioning seems pretty good. That's a good disengage. By the way, I meant to ask you this earlier. What do you think Nami's main role in a team is? I, she is, I guess, an enhancer. Like, I, the E is OP, and the heal and the lockdown, she wants to disengage if they... There it is. There it is. That's what it is. Her primary role, she's an enchanter that disengages. Okay. Yeah. So, what you did there, where you're helping your Galio escape, that is literally why Nami is picked. That is her strength. Yes, yeah, she does a couple other things. She heals and sustains and pokes a little bit, but primarily she is a disen disengager. Her wave is one of the best disengages in the game. Probably second only to like Janna's ult, maybe. But yeah. Okay. I actually don't play her much. She's my backup if Seraphine gets taken or blocked. Nami's great. I, I know a lot of players that get the high elo only playing Nami. Nami is very, very versatile. She's I think she's a really great mixture of like always useful no matter what, even if you're like having an off game. But if you're like really, really on one, like you're playing out of your mind, she's so good. Well, I find with her a lot, even on games like this, where I felt pretty okay about my play, um, I still end up weak. Like my team, and with Seraphine, I feel like I can yeah I, I think it's easier to get more done with seraphine but i think if you i think if you were a little bit more on top of your play this game I, I the game would look a lot different but yeah seraphine's ease of use and like accessibility is uh a lot a lot more obvious i'd say and then i'm gonna play her with you and you're gonna see me misplay and mess everything no up. no no you're gonna do great Okay, so Yasuo's going for the split. We see our Gnar walking away. Oh, Galio just went in. Uh, yeah. Wow, he went in again. All right, so we could have flashed that stun and lived. Here, I, we we chose we chose to we chose to ulti. Which I'm, I'm guessing you used your ult like literally the second it came up. Honestly, I wouldn't have even used the ulti. I would just... Right here, just flash? Yeah, yeah. If you flash this ability right here, you see? The stun is what kills you. The stun is what dooms you. Okay. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't even ulti. Because at that point, if you have no one to like follow up, your ult's not going to save you. Your ult's not going to save Jen. It's, it's basically just holding you still for brand. But that's just a mechanical error. I I have no idea what that Galio is doing, honestly. He and Kane just wanted to fight the whole game. All they wanted to do was go fight. Like yeah. one v three. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of low elo players just treat solo queue like team deathmatch. Okay, this is really good though. This is super super good. So what are we gonna do? We just wipe their team at 28 minutes into the game yes they got an inhibitor but the supers are still not even out of there the supers are right here we should have went baron but they didn't want to yeah that's that's when you need to be really really aggressive in your pings uh like i just saw i've seen one two pings one of those might have been yours but this is when i am like Spam pinging like this is when this is when I, I don't know how much of my stream you watch But this is literally when I will use my pings until I cannot ping anymore to try to get the message across You can't just give them like light suggestions like I said you we're, we're gonna work on your understanding of the game and your confidence and and Knowing that Baron is 100% the correct call here uh, Well, that's why I went there and started doing my twirly bob. I know it's not called that you know. <laughs> <laughs> I say a lot of things that aren't the right word Okay, but yeah. And they did come. They did come. Good. They... That that's good. And it looks like you guys definitely get this. There's no way you don't. Yeah. 
Uh, but I want to see confidence. I want to see you spam pinging. Do not be afraid to be the person that spam pings. Because as long as you're not spam pinging to be obnoxious and toxic, it's good. Because getting your team on the same page in solo queue is, like, invaluable. Alright, so now we've got a little bit of a rough decision up ahead of us. We are... Our base is getting swarmed with supers. You really don't want even want to be caring about this. What you want to be doing right now is booking it for the dragon. Uh, because that's the decision your team should be making, is if you guys are contesting the dragon or not. Um, we don't have vision, so we have to assume they're like probably here or possibly already on it. But immediately at a baron, at a baron recall, you're going to get home guards, you've got mobies. You can be going here. Don't waste your time with this. This is the top laner's, top laner's um, role. So I did it, but you're saying I should have done it instantly. Yeah, it, instantly. Too long. Immediately, because that's the decision your team needs to be making, is... Do you risk coming through all this unwarded territory to try to contest the dragon? Because this is going to be their third dragon, and that gives them something called soul point. It's not going to give them soul, but getting soul point is really, really valuable because it puts a ton of pressure on the enemy team. They basically have they have to contest the last the next dragon. Because like I don't know the stats behind it, but I'm pretty sure like 85% of teams that like get soul win the game. Something like that. Yeah, okay, so they got the dragon, it's fine. You guys probably wouldn't have been able to stop it anyways. Alright. So once again, we can't use that until we see the wind wall. He misplayed and didn't use it, but... And then I walked too far away from the tower here. I know, I'm an idiot. Uh, not necessarily. I think you probably can continue maybe kiting over here. The, the priority isn't necessarily surviving, because honestly, at this stage of the game, towers aren't even going to like harm Yasuo. The priority is getting away from the minion wave, because that's what enables Yasuo. Like, look how much damage the tower just did to Yasuo. It, it literally... Yeah, it, it literally didn't. So it's not necessarily, like, buckling down. I think if you come back this way, Senna kills you anyways. So I was dead either way. Yeah, but try to kite away from the minion wave at, at that point. Distancing you in those infinite dashes is the priority, so I think you guys just lose here. Yeah, this is pretty much a game. save it for a little bit and then yeah it's just trash yeah okay so, so i yeah I, I would say the two biggest things you need to work on is knowing when to recall and getting off way more recalls than i'm seeing uh definitely consider swapping out mobies for lucidity boots be drawing those parallel lines those horizontal lines between you and your adc match the aggression of your adc um and yeah other than all the other little things i mentioned i think those are the biggest things but I, I think I think your support play is going to tremendously improve when you start finding those windows where you can sneak in recalls. Um, I mean, we can watch the end of the game here, but I think they just probably walk it in and... I think they're unstoppable at this point. So not nothing to really like coach here. It's just they've it's got. Gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Okay. Well, do you have any questions about the the replay we just watched? You answered them. Congrats. Cool. Cool.